Farm to store in days, not weeks. That's 80 Acres Farms. Did you know that most salad travels over 2,000 miles to reach your plate? But not 80 Acres Farms. Their crisp salad greens and herbs are food less traveled. This means it stays fresher for longer in your fridge. My salad lasts all week long. No more food waste. Oh, and did I mention there's no need to wash this produce? Because 80 Acres Farms uses zero pesticides. Visit 80acresfarms.com to learn more and find their salads and herbs at your local Kroger. From farm to your Atlanta store in days, not weeks. That's 80 Acres Farms. Did you know that most salad travels over 2,000 miles to reach your plate? But not 80 Acres Farms. Their crisp salad greens and herbs are food less traveled. This means it stays fresher for longer in your fridge. My salad lasts all week long. No more food waste. Oh, and did I mention there's no need to wash this produce? Because 80 Acres Farms uses zero pesticides. Visit 80acresfarms.com to learn more and find their salads and herbs at your local Kroger. <coughs> Sorry. Wow. You know, wait, here's the thing, professional, <laughs> pro- Mr. Professional Podcaster. Uh, maybe uh, coughing before you hit the record button, not after. Timing was horrible on that it one. It was really, really bad. Like, you are you literally are a professional, and you'd know better. Good thing is I can edit all this out, and nobody will never, ever know what happened. Chris, you're not going to edit this out. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. <laughs> What's up, Eric? How are you? Hey, man. Uh, I am doing okay. I, uh, uh, dude, a lot, of, a lot of, like, pretty interesting news. Is it just me, or is every celebrity ever dying? Uh, yeah, I mean, they like, are we're, going. We're, we're, we're a week and a half into the year, man. Like, we're. <laughs> I think it's the ones that we like the most are going first for some reason. And I don't like it. Uh, I mean, you got really Betty bad. White, of course. Um, what, what other, besides Cindy the one Portier. I know we'll talk about, cele- uh, Bob Saget. Um, Cindy Portier. Who's she? Guy, black dude. First, uh, first black actor to get an Oscar. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, Sydney Portier. I didn't understand what you said. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm I, saying, okay, I speak bad. I speak bad English. I, I speak bad English. Uh, Sydney Poitier, Peter Bach, uh, not only a really famous director, he's so important in Hollywood because he's like the, what they call the link to the past. Cause he was at that age where he interviewed and like hung out with all the really old school directors like Hitchcock and all that mm-hmm. but, while he was young. And then he became older. And so he was like this liaison to old Hollywood. He was, uh, we uh, met him uh, numerous times actually at the uh, TCM film festival that we would go to every year. Oh yeah. Um, and he was really cool. Um, and then uh, uh, Dan Reeves, the old Atlanta Falcons football coach, uh, yeah. was another person that we lost. Uh, obviously, Norm McDonald. I, Norm McDonald passed late last year, September. Yeah, late last year. But I was even just thinking in these last like two weeks. I mean, oh, like geez, there's been yeah. like this um, rash of them. Uh, the Bob Saget one was really sad. I mean, you know, that one actually, there's a few deaths you know, maybe, maybe one every other year or, or one a year or something like that, that kind of gets me where I'm like, oh man, like that one, you know, you, you feel certain deaths more than others. Um, I mean, Betty White, like, I think everyone's sad, but she was a hundred years old. So you're like, oh, well, you know, it sucks that she died, but she was freaking, you know, 99. She lived and, a good long life. Yeah, yeah. She was like a week away from turning a hundred. Like she did pretty damn good. She was in uh, show business for 70 years. Like she you know had a run. Did? Yeah, she, like, she she got to the point they were planning this big huge party for her Hollywood ABC or whoever. Yeah, and she sat there in her house, put both of her middle fingers up and said, "Pay for it now because I'm not going to be there." And then just went, bah. "Yeah, yeah, exactly." <laughs> and and she's it's like, cool. you, guys, you guys gave me everything in the world, but now I'm just gonna uh, just uh, take that I'm away. Out. <laughs> yeah, she just said, "Peace, I'm out." I'm no, but, she, but but you know what I mean. Like that one was sad, but you're also like, okay, she was 100 years old and had her time. Bob Saget was a young guy, all things considered. I mean, I know he was like 60, Four? but you know, for death, like that's, that's Norm McDonald also was kind of sudden because no one knew he was really sick, and um, it's just Don't super sad. Th- you also have to think about it too. These celebrities that live longer, well, it's because they have more money to buy like better food and you know yeah. exercise and stuff. So yeah. they do live longer because they have a lot. Yeah. I would say a lot easier, but sometimes easier lives. Saget, he had lots of money. He didn't have a stressful life, I don't think. You know, I'm sure he had shit going on, but the the rumor is he had COVID a few weeks ago. So they don't know if it was any repercussions of that. They're not speculating, but they did say he had COVID two weeks ago. Get diagnosed but oh, okay yeah I, I had read i had read it was longer than two weeks i had it read probably it was, was two months. weeks it was yeah. probably was longer yeah i had read somewhere it was around like a couple of months ago oh really so they, didn't, yeah, they, did, they didn't know how how it really affected him but that he was diagnosed but then again who knows i don't trust pretty much if the if the news media said the sky is blue i would still question it so i don't, well, trust don't look up 
<laughs> have you seen that movie? Don't look up yet. No, I have not. It's on our uh, watch list. Uh, Dude, we'll, we'll watch it. it it's good. It's really good. I'm, I actually want to watch it again. That's Ooh, how much. That's, it, that's how much it pisses me off and makes me like just want to watch it. I don't know. It's just it's really good. Between Jennifer Lawrence and uh, you know what's the guy's name? Uh, Jack from Titanic. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, they, Leonardo they, DiCaprio. <laughs> they were really good in it. Anyway, I'm changing the subject. Back to Bob Saget. Yes, um, Bob Saget. I met him uh, as well, and super nice guy. And this is you know everyone has said what a nice guy. You notice how everyone who's chiming in about Bob Saget all has the exact same thing to say, which is yeah. like pretty much the nicest guy you could ever meet. I met him. Um, I did a wine event in Los Angeles, uh, in actually in Beverly Hills at like a really fancy restaurant, in Beverly Hills. And it was a benefit for the school Skelderoma. I, uh, I can't remember the name, how you pronounce it. Sc- Sclerodorama, Videorama, Megatron, whatever it's called, awesome. uh, which is an <laughs> autoimmune disease. And it was like Bob Saget's oh. big charity. Like he was really into it. I guess his like sister was afflicted with it. And so he it was oh, like his like lifelong charity thing that he did. And it was this event and uh, I was kind of hosting the alcohol portion of the event. So I would kind of like talk to everyone in the crowd. And there were some celebrities scattered throughout there. And Bob Saga was there. And, you know, I've done these kind of things before, interacted with them. And, and the trick is you never act like they're a celebrity and you, they of treat course. you normal and all that. They, you know, that's how you do. You don't like snap a secret photo. You don't do any stupid stuff and you're fine. But, you know, I've done a million of them. The celebrities never come up and talk to you. But at the end, when it was all done, as everything's getting packed up, even though it was his event, Bob made it a point to come over and like chat me up and just thank me for doing it. And I was a nobody, like I'm just some schlub that was there essentially working the event. And he had like big, important things to do. And he just wanted to come by and be like, Hey, that was awesome. That was really fun. Thank you for talking to everyone. You, you were really easy going in for the crowd. Like he was paying me compliments. I made some jokes uh, when I was up there and he said, that was actually really funny. And I liked the way you did like super, super personable. And I'm just like, I remember leaving, like feeling like he was a friend. Um, and yeah. so really, really sad to uh, have him gone. He was one of those guys that always showed up to the radio station and you were like, he, he even if he just met you, you were his friend. And and I had met him a d- half a dozen times or so. And between radio stations and working, you know, with shows up in Hollywood and stuff, I've ran into him. So He's a super nice guy, but the, the the connection that we have, I don't know if you heard the other podcast, Conversey With Us, which you can get on thisisfunner.com, but that was the first correspondence between my, my wife and myself was sending her that Rollin' With Saget song that Jamie Kennedy made. <laughs> I remember that song, yeah. Because he was, uh, he was just left my radio station, and we played it for fun because we're an alt-rock station, and Bob Saget was on the show. And then I sent it over to her and said, hey, he's on your way to your station. If you wanted to play this or use it in any way, here it is. And she's like, thank you. And then that's how our whole conversation started. And now, you know, we've been married for how many years? Too many. Too many years. Too many. Yeah, actually, speaking of. <laughs> Isn't uh, that crazy? I'm, I'm two and a half weeks away from being married for 21 years. So 21? Yeah, 21 years of marriage in about two and a half weeks. Wow, your your relationship can now drink alcohol. Yeah, that's what, that's our joke. That's what we're going to celebrate as a uh, uh, not even just relationship, marriage. Like we were in a relationship before oh. that. Anyways, yeah, you were you were for like what for, you did what pick her up at a high school one year. Yeah, she was still in high school when we dated. I was thirty five, um, <laughs> and she was she was, she was fourteen, freshman in high school. And let me tell you, she looked good. And no, none of that. None of that is true. Um, Most of that's true, actually. Only some percentage of that is true. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I really want to, I know, because we got, you know, clock is ticking on this. I know we all got to yeah. bounce to different things. Uh, I, I, before we get to an SMRT, before we get to Rotten Tomatoes, and before we get to Boba Fett, which we will definitely oh, no. talk about now that I caught up, I want you, I'll give you some time to look it up. It's uh, the Bob Saget, uh, famous clip from Bob Saget, uh, Half Baked. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So why don't you go look it up? Because I want to play that one. But basically, uh, there's literally only a few lo- movies will typically not make me laugh out loud. Uh, you know, the whole LOL thing is not true for me. You know, it takes a lot to actually make me laugh out loud. This is a line that when I hear it, I laugh almost every single time. Even thinking about it, it makes me laugh because just Remember, this was when Bob Saget wasn't as known for his dirty mouth. He was still oh. on America's Funniest Home Videos. So this was the dad on Ameri- on freaking Full House, or what was it? Yeah, Full House, not Full House. Is it Full House? Full House. Yeah, Full House. The dad on Full House is like cussing a blue streak and stuff. So if you got that clip, I want to play it. That's my favorite one. You in here for some marijuana? Marijuana? 
Man, this is some bullshit. Marijuana is not a drug. I used to suck dick for coke. I seen them. And that's an addiction, man. You ever suck some dick for marijuana? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. So funny, it's just, it's the best thing. It's, it really Please, is the best man. thing. <laughs> <laughs> we played that on my other podcast too because that's evelyn's favorite line. yeah oh it's just it's literally just the best clip ever um okay well hey i don't know about you uh play the music let's talk a little fet of the boba yeah oh, oh is that the right music what's yeah. the right music is that the right one it, that's the right one man hit it oh, 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 oh. Oh, man. So, uh, you know, last time when we spoke, I had only watched uh, episode two uh, and, you know, one. You, oh, excuse me, episode one, hadn't even watched two yet. And uh, we did watch it that night and I even rewatched it again. But point is, uh, 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 getting what caught up? up was great. Super excited, super fun. Um, let's talking about two for a second, since we didn't get a chance to talk about it last time. Okay, I'm I really it. enjoyed the train heist. Um, uh, part of that I thought that reminded me so much of like throwback Hollywood which you know I'm a fan of like it really felt like um, old west I mean think about it it was rolling through a desert town area it was a train and there's like a shootout on the top of the train that's literally like a movie from the old west it's like an old 1952 western so I I love the way that was shot they would also the, the train would also just shoot at them for no reason and they, okay. they were like, we were protecting it. No, you weren't. You were just shooting it up for no reason. Yeah, yeah. You were trying to pick them off and kill them. But wait a minute. Yeah. I got a, I got a question. Why did the Tuscan Raiders just move? I don't know. Uh, five hundred yards to the west. Like they, they chose to live in a place where the death train comes in and kills them. And it's like they lose all their people. It's like, hey guys, I know the train sucks, but if you can't be like, I don't know, maybe move a few blocks to the west where the train doesn't get you. But they, they, if they move that far away, they have an HOA and they can't paint their house a different color. That's true. They, and, and, you know, they love Tuscan, uh, Tuscan Raider Brown. So. Yeah, they do. So, I mean, everything is is so different away from that one area of dirt. All the other dirt <laughs> so different. Uh, no, I don't I don't know. They could. That, I don't, maybe that's where all those little shells where they drink out of uh, thrive or something. Or I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I just love the whole episode, at least two. Talk about two right now. Anyways, it's kind of like. I would describe it as kind of like taking the messy first steps towards kind of seizing control, right? Like this is uh, the Tatooine's criminal underworld, and this is their kind of uh, maybe not clumsy first steps, but definitely learning on the job on how to seize control. Um, yeah, and but, what's uh, going on and stuff. Yeah, and then and then of course, like I was trying to hint last episode, uh, they do uh, bring back some of the kingpins from the previous. Um, uh, would, would you say kingpin i guess uh, members from the previous yeah, don't don't say kingpin because then we'll start thinking it's a yeah. spider it's an extra it's universe from spider yeah. basically joba job of the hut's twins or something show yes, up yes uh, some some is. lady hut and some male hut brother and sister uh i think they're brothers and sisters uh, yeah they're they're twins but are, are they his kids are I they thought, i thought they were his sister, sister and brother they I might thought, be. i thought there was three huts he, it was jabba and then sister and brother oh, and this I, is them coming to claim their uh uh, their throne claim their throne they yeah they want their throne but but boba won't give it to them and then they bring that big ass bounty hunter which was kind of cool yeah 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 i i i want i think that that's uh kind of interesting as well i really love the flashbacks too i mean obviously seeing the huts were great and you know that that's gonna be a thing um that's oh, yeah. pretty obvious uh but um the the battle uh learning how to fight with the tuscans uh the train fight proving himself yeah, and and obviously it's it's it was like him earning their respect, but also, you know, he's a prideful guy too. It was also them, uh, not just them earning. It was them earning his respect as much as him giving. The, you know, whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it was like these. Um, uh, the Pike Sy- Syndicate, by the way, which uh, thank uh, thank you, Audrey, for uh, remembering this when we saw it. The Pike Syndicate was the uh, the train, right? That was uh, who was yep. on the train. Uh, she reminded me that those are previously seen in the Clone Wars and in uh, Solo, the movie yes. Solo. Yep, they are. There's, yep, the same train was in Solo, remember? Yeah, and they were because they were transporting uh, the narcotic uh, spice, um, yes. 
which uh, uh, and now they have to what uh, pay a toll, I think, every time they want to use that uh, coming through. Yeah, that that area, because that area is, I guess, a little bit like, I don't know, say lower, but uh, um, level ground. I don't know. It's a freaking desert. Doesn't dunes move and shit? I don't know. Yeah, that, yeah that's exactly it. Like a dune <laughs> so is not the same place every single time. <laughs> so confused at why the path's the same place. But anyway, yeah, uh, it was pretty dope seeing all that. I, I wish they would get out of the flashbacks. Uh, all episode and get more into the future but i know they have to, to set up you know him escaping the sarlacc pit uh them you know the huts coming back and try to re- take over their throne plus this 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 giant black gray haired wookie called black chrysatan <laughs> which is okay <laughs> name. I, I i re i rewound uh i rewound because we have the uh subtitles on Okay, uh, and we we wound just so I could reread it to make sure I was reading that name correctly. Chris Satan. <laughs> it's like someone's like trying to be clever. And like we'll call him Christ Satan. They're like, no, 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 that's too obvious. Drop the T, and, and it'll, it'll be, be like, Satan. It'll be like he's a like Wookie, so he growls. It's like Chris Satan. <laughs> but no, he was pretty badass. And uh, you did watch the third one, correct? Uh, okay, watch the third one, but don't tell me the end because with about ten minutes to go in the end, we had some like issues at the house we had to take care of, and I had to like turn it off. And then it was wow. like it was like plumbing stuff, so wow. okay. toilets overflowing and stuff like that. And it kind of took precedent. It was like eleven o'clock at night, and we never finished it. So I watched four fifths of it. Uh, we will finish it here probably in a couple of hours. Um, We'll be finishing it. I mean, I basically saw. Um, yeah, tell me what you got up to. Okay, so. well, let's just say, uh, what would you call those little band of brats? Uh, uh, these these oh. these younglings uh, that Boba Fett is going to be uh, taking under his wing, or I don't know what we would call that, but uh, I describe them as um, They're like a scooter gang, like Akira. Remember the ja- anime Akira? Yeah. It's like an Akira bike gang who've upgraded their bodies and droid parts and are wreaking havoc on the locals with thieving. That's yeah, how I would describe. And it. I didn't like them at all. I didn't like. They were kind of annoying. Yeah, I didn't. It, I didn't like them. And like they're on Tatooine, right, where everything's a sepia tone. Why do they have bright ass bikes that yeah, are so you don't exciting. blend in at all? Yeah. And so that means they're either stupid or it's just dumb. I don't know. I think they're stupid, but I mean, you know, Boba Fett needs pawns. So you saw them. He kind of helps. They kind of help him. Like a, the there's like a back. sneak attack by Crusatan or Crusatan. <laughs> uh, uh, there's there's a sneak attack and uh, the the youth the the youths as uh, you would say in my cousin Vinny the youths uh, help him out yep. and I guess become part of his unofficial like like you said pawns. I think pawns a good way to put it. Yeah, and and, and Miss Piggy and Kermit the Frog's kids. One of them gets hurt, so they throw him into that machine. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah even I, I mean that's kind of cool. That was one of my favorite characters when I watched Return of the Jedi originally. Was oh my god, a big fat green pig that walks. That is <laughs> awesome. And then it showed up in Mandalorian season two, and now they're in this. So I'm really enjoying it. It's quite fun. Uh, um, yeah, those little those little pig guys. Uh, when we were watching little. the show. Oh, sorry, big pig guys. Uh, when we were watching the show and those came on the screen, I told my daughters, I said, you know, I, we were weren't we weren't super poor but we weren't exactly we were lower lower middle class like on the verge of being poor but like technically middle class yeah. and uh uh i didn't get many star wars toys when i was young i mean you i had literally, action figures i had the pigmen action figures i had, I had them both them i had there was two different ones i had them both i had only literally like five star wars toys like ever in my entire life and though two of them were those pig guys so they're like emblazoned in my memory um yeah i have think i had one pig guy and han solo and that was it that's all i had for toys when i was younger uh because i didn't get them so i bought them when i was older so my room's full of that shit now i guess you know my room my, my office is like a gallery of toys of star wars and marvel so yeah. But uh, but yeah, um, it, it it ends so well. You haven't even seen the best part, so it's that's what's oh, really? okay. yeah, well, there's Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun. I'll wait. Till, it's funner. So when when you watch it, we finish watching it. We'll talk about it next week because it's uh, it's definitely the last ten minutes of that episode uh, is part of the if not the best part. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, literally in the next like hour and a half or something like that, we'll be watching it. Just well, then get back on here and record it now. <laughs> We will Damn not. it, and then edit that part in. All right, so we're done with that. Before we're done for the day, I have a, two, a couple things I want to get to that we haven't done in a while. First up, you already played the music, so uh, we're already in the segment. So why don't we go ahead and do a little Rotten Tomatoes? You already played the music. Yep. The theme today, uh, because, well, I actually, you know, 
when I was picking these, it was yesterday. So come on, people, it's a freaking podcast. Cut me some slack. But it was two famous uh, celebrity birthdays yesterday. And that would be Mr. Bradley Cooper and Mr. Robert Duvall. And I figured they both had such a wide uh, swath of uh, movies between them, uh, uh, quite different movies. I thought, let's do an episode of Rotten Tomatoes with the movies featuring those two actors. So Is there any movie with up, them in it together? Uh, I couldn't I find any. So. I don't think yeah, so. Yeah, I don't think so either. But either anyway, way. Keep going. All right, first up, let's start with Bradley Cooper. Um, really the first movie, not the first movie, but you know, one of the early movies where I remember him being, I guess I don't want to call a star, but more like a, um, I, we, we knew of him before this, but this seemed like his first first star turn yes i believe the movie over. was uh, nominated for best picture it was <laughs> silver linings playbook from oh Calvary. you think that's what broke him well not what broke him i mean he's he was but i think that's when he became like big that was when he was like um because think about it what okay this I was think 2012 was breakthrough what do you think was i think 2009 was was breakthrough with all the hangover movies when they started i think that's what put him yeah on. okay you know what yeah you're right you're right i i kind of i I kind of meant it as like a serious actor. I mean, uh, oh, he's not a serious actor until he was having sex with Lady Gaga in that movie. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. He, you're, you're absolutely right. He was a star because of the Hangover movies. Yeah. But I think you'd think of him as okay. He was a bit player, got lucky with the Hangover, and he makes comedy movies now, um, which is funny because he was the least funny of the whole guys. He but was. <laughs> he really was. But uh, but you know, he had in this like same period of time. You know, he, this is when he kind of started making some pretty big movies because he makes Silver Lining Playbook. It gets nominated for Best Picture. They do one more hangover movie because, you know, they had to do a cash grab. Like they should have just titled it Hangover Part 3, The Cash Grab. Hangover Part he does, 3 with John Goodman is all that's yeah, He does uh, American <laughs> Hustle, which was good. Guardians of the Galaxy is that's 2014. What, that's what American Sniper realize. is 2014. Uh, uh, like, uh, literally in like a two-year span, he does like four or five really good movies. And so, uh, but anyways, this particular one, a Silver Linings Playbook, this is when Jennifer, I mean, she's just smoking hot in this movie. Um, she's a smoke show but yeah. and i remember it was nominated for best picture what what do you think did you see this movie i did i think he wears a garbage bag right he does because i think he's trying to lose weight yeah and he is not all there and they kind of get he's like in a mental institution and he both of them are both a little uh they're both playing with about 47 cards in their deck and yeah, they yeah. they kind of get along together and, and they kind of fight and then they dance and that's pretty much it right yeah, it's oh, kind of like, like uh, you literally just described the entire the entire story. So that's uh, pretty good. But she was a smoke show. Bradley Cooper's a good looking guy. They look good together. They danced. It was fun. It was not my first picture. But what did the but critics think? The critics hated it. No, I'm sorry. The critics probably loved it because a lot of people didn't like it. So um, am I going first or are you going first? Uh, go ahead. All right, I'm going to say 86. Yeah, you know, I literally was right there with you. I was uh, at 89. So I thought that, you know, for best picture, it's got to at least be close to a 90. So uh, next up, another Bradley Cooper. I wanted to pick one that he literally did the very next year, uh, or like I think it actually came out in January. So like uh, 13 months later, this movie comes out. This is about a true story about Chris uh, Lyle, I want to say his name is. Uh, the movie's called American Snow. Chris Kyle, I think, is his name. Uh, American oh. Sniper. It's a it's a true story about uh, one of the uh, highest rated snipers in uh, America's history, and it just so happens that it was a recent war. Like everyone thinks it would be like Vietnam or World no. War II or something. It was uh, in Afghanistan, and it kind of tells the story. And it was really sad because he gets killed in real life by someone he's trying to mentor and trying help. To help. Uh, a vet, a veteran who was having mental problems, like he did, snapped at a gun range and turned the gun and fired it on him and killed him, um, which is just really sad. But um, I liked the movie, but when I think about it, the movie really had no plot. It was just like, here's him shooting some people and then like screaming on the phone to his wife and them arguing. And like, I just don't remember it being like very satisfying. No, it wasn't. There was no, there was no meat to that movie. It was like, okay, I'm in war. Okay, I'm out of war. Okay, I'm having flashbacks. Okay, my flashbacks will stop if I help these people. It helping these people maybe will be get their flashbacks. Oh, they shot me. Yeah, scene. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, and yeah. scene. Yeah, it was. It was like um. But it wasn't bad. That's the thing. Like, it, yeah, it wasn't satisfying, but it wasn't bad. It's like going to a a really nice steakhouse, but you can't have steak, so you order their like 
chicken pa- chicken parm with pasta and it's like hey that was pretty good like don't get me wrong it's a steakhouse a big expensive place the chicken parm with pasta is probably pretty damn good but it's not the steak that you came there for right yeah it's like that's not one movie that i ever said hmm let's go watch that again yeah 100 i was like oh i saw it <laughs> okay and then so i'll go first on this one i'm gonna give the score i actually am gonna ding it more points because i'm trying to think like a critic here critics are typically pretty liberal I think this is a movie about a sniper, American hero. It shows him being gallant. They kind of are anti that thing. They think it's like Americanism at its worst. I think they'll ding it. So I was going to say like, I don't know, 71, 72, but I'm going to ding it points. I'm going to say like 64. Wow. Okay. I didn't think you were going to go that low. I thought it did quite well. And he did get nominated for some shit, I believe in it. No, I um, believe he was. Yeah, I think he yeah. might have been nominated for Best Actor. But I'm going to go a little higher because I I, I think that it, it is pseudo artsy, uh, like Lost in Translation in a sense, where it just it, it's just a story. That's how the story is. There's no doesn't have to be some big huge, you yeah. know, arc to it or something. So I'm going to give it a little bit more. I'm going to go like 74. 74. Yeah, that's like I said. That's kind of where I was starting from, but I gave it some nice points. Okay, let's switch over to a Mister Robert Duvall, legendary actor. He is one of these guys where uh, you want him in your movie, but you don't want him in your movie as the lead character. He's a great side character. He's he's the perfect like um, supporting actor in a movie, right? Okay. Like he's he's always going to deliver super solid, great performance. I mean, the what? guy was in the freaking Godfather for, for without God's sake. saying the movies you picked. What's your favorite movie of Robert Duvall's? he's had a hell of a been in a lot um, yeah he's been in a lot and he's been around for what feels like a hundred years now obviously the godfather is gonna be on there um because i just think it's one of the greatest movies of all time um let's see i'm gonna go back and probably say the movie the conversation which is actually kind of a boring movie but his performance was insane uh and that was like a uh, nominee for best picture in like 1975 that and the godfather and 70, uh, 74 and he uh yeah he godfather 2 is in 74 also yeah which what, what a hell of a year uh he was also right? really great in oh god what was that movie where he played like a lieutenant colonel bull something apocalypse the great now. uh the great santini apocalypse now yeah apocalypse now that's true because he was a bull lieutenant Kilgore. Was the great santini. yeah he was lieutenant colonel bill uh my favorite would have to be i mean uh, there's a couple of them that kind of line up for me a little older. Uh, Lonesome Dove was one of the first times I actually recognized, you know, who he was and his work and really enjoyed that as a miniseries on TV with Ricky Schroeder. But Days of Thunder was probably one of my first. Movies. Oh, this is called a segue because my first movie up oh, with shit. Mr. Robert Duvall is I wanted to pick one that here's the thing. I purposely picked this one because I'm like, you know what? I bet you, Chris, like, I'm trying to think which Robert Duvall movies would Chris really respond to and get? And I'm, I didn't want to pick the obvious ones. I didn't want to go straight to Godfather because you know that's going to be like a 98, a 99, or a 100. Like, I've never seen a freaking it, perfect movie. Oh my God, you're an idiot. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? I bet you he's seen I, and has an opinion on Days of Thunder. So that is our first movie. Can I, and guess, of course, in a, can I guess the second movie before we get there, too? Yes, before we get there, because right. I also picked it with you in mind and I'm going <laughs> to love it that you're going to pick it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Okay, go. Ready? Yep. You go. I mean, I guess gone in 60 seconds. Damn. That was my, th- that was my backup choice. I only picked deep two impact. from him. If you were to pick one more deep impact. Yeah. <laughs> I had three on the list. I had a uh, um, deep impact days of thunder. And of course gone 60 seconds and I wanted to limit it. And so I just did days of thunder. So let's do days of thunder first. Okay. That's good. Um, it stars Tom Cruise. It's got a lot of flash. I mean, this was a movie. I got, I remember when this came out, I saw it in theaters like yeah, um, Nicole Kidman's in it. Nicole Kidman's in it. And, and uh, it's a, basically a NASCAR rivalry, uh, uh, like between, uh, God, what was his name? Cole Trickle. Yep. Um, and I don't remember the other guy's name, but the other guy was Michael Rooker. Michael Rooker. Yeah, I was going yes. to find his name. Yeah, he, it was him. And he was called, uh, his name was Rowdy Burns. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And uh, Carrie Elways, or however you pronounce his name, was also in, in it as well. Nicole Kidman. I mean, it's got a great cast. John C. Riley. Yes. Here's the pro. Oh, by the way, it was also written by Robert Town who helped write the Godfather with Mario Puzo. So like it has Uh, some real pedigree. Here's the problem. Even though I love this movie and it's super enjoyable, this is not actually a good movie. (laughs) Like this is, if you were to watch this movie again, it's entertaining, but you're like, okay, there's really no plot. You could see every plot thing coming a mile before it happens. The acting is, is subpar. 
But don't get me wrong. If it was on TV, I would totally watch the damn thing. It, the but first, there's no way this got a good score. The no first way. 20 minutes of this movie is the best part. When he's oh, the, with all the he, racing. Yeah. yeah. When they're like, when they're like, I'm going to come into pit. He goes, I can't. Why? We're busy right now. What are you doing? We're uh, eating ice cream, eating ice cream. And then he <laughs> goes and gets out of the car and they start a big fight in the pits. Like that 20 minutes of him being introduced, then building the car, then doing all those races and looking like shitheads was like the best yeah, part of super the movie. cool and then what, what about when they race in their wheelchairs against each other how about the rental cars yeah oh the rental cars that's great so listen the movie is so enjoyable but there's no way on god green earth this got a good score but here's the thing did it get a 20 or did it get a 60 and because of that range that's why i picked this movie and you have to go first my friend well with names like Cruz, kidman quaid duval rooker and riley i mean those are all giant names yeah in Hollywood, but back then Nicole Kidman wasn't necessarily as well known. No, in fact, Tom Randy Cruise Craig, and Robert Duvall were are, really the big stars of this. Like they everyone were. else and wasn't, you know. Now that John C. Riley is doing funny shit with uh, that one guy and Michael Rooker's Mary Poppins, yeah, I mean it could have been a different story, but uh, I don't think it got rating well. So uh, I'm gonna just, I'm just, God, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say fifty. Yeah, I'm going to go a little lower. I'm going to say 45, uh, but I bet you this is one of those movies where the audience gave it a much better score than the critics did because I think this is an enjoyable audience movie, but not it much is. else. Okay. So, there's, there's some really, really funny parts in it. Uh, it's uh, semi tr- like the, when they get the guy, when they get Tom Cruise, that chick on the trailer, the cop, the fake cop or whatever. Anyway. Yeah. 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 So, uh, okay. The next movie, Deep Impact. This came out in 1998. <laughs> I didn't even have to look that one up because I remember going to see this in theaters because this was the year of the Armageddon movie because this is also when the movie Armageddon came out. And this will always be remembered as the lesser of the two movies. If, yes. if you were to ask people, hey, we're going to put on two meteors hitting the earth movies. We have Armageddon or we have Deep Impact. 10 times out of 10, people are going to see Armageddon, except for me. And here's why. Because Armageddon is shown on TNT about every 15 days. Yeah, it and is. so I've seen it 912 times. And don't get me wrong, I love it. There's a, It's like the uh, Marvel movies. There's a reason like with it, it's on. I could be like, yeah, screw it. I'll watch this because it's good. Like, it's super bad in a good way. Like, it's a stupid movie that I love. But I would pick Deep Impact because it doesn't get the love. It's not as appreciated. It's just as stupid. It's a comet hurtling towards Earth, and it's going to end human life, and the government Fs everything up, and then at the end, everything works out, and everyone's a happy camper, uh, and Morgan Freeman's a president, which is kind of awesome. But, like, uh, it's really not a good movie, but Armageddon's way more enjoyable, but Deep Impact doesn't get the love. Uh, you you are correct. Uh, it definitely had bigger names at the time. Yep. I mean, even though Duvall, Taylioni, I mean, you had the Elijah, Elijah Wood, Wood, who's been a star since he was a kid. Vanessa Redgrave is from a legendary acting family. Uh, Morgan Freeman's in this. I mean, you John got... Favreau's even in this one. So, I mean, it's got a lot of people that oh, were that's just right. I forgot up. John Favreau's in this. That's yeah, right. Yeah, he's one of the astronauts. So, a lot of people were just coming up, and a couple of people that almost there, but you know, and then, then a couple of people that were like Morgan Freeman, Robert Duvall, and Elijah Wood. So. But they didn't have the Ben Affleck. They didn't have the Bruce Willis. They didn't have the uh, Lily Tom, Lily, Lily Tomlin, Lily Tomlin, Lim Tyler. You know, they didn't have the, all those guys. They also didn't have Aerosmith. Go, Air close your eyes when I fall asleep and I miss you, baby. I remember they didn't, this have, movie. they didn't have one of those songs. I've seen this movie a million times. I like it. Um, but I guess the I'm guessing the well, Armageddon's the what? superior movie, and Correct. we've done this. Uh, we did Armageddon on the podcast before, like, oh, probably a year ago, I remember. And I remember Armageddon got like a 60 something. Yeah. So, if, like, if Armageddon, which is clearly the better movie, got like a 60, I, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go well under 60. But you uh, go first what, then. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go first. I, this has got to be in the 40s for me. And so I'm going to say, like, f- no, you know what? I'm going to say an even 50. I'm going to do 50. I'm going to say 42. 42 okay well that was my last movie that i picked I gotta do this so, quick because i gotta pick up my son Hurry. okay so let's do this uh yeah. silver linings playbook uh really was a 92 you guessed uh, 86 i guess in 89 we're pretty close there uh american sniper uh this is where you might start to pull away it's a 72 i guess 64 you guess 74 uh then deep impact you were close again 42 is what you guess it's a 45 so you're only three off there i guessed 50 and then days of thunder uh i'm a little closer here you guessed 50 i guess 45 uh you had a uh, the, uh, the real score is a 38 
But when I Ooh. add it all up, you won by about six points. That's awesome. I never win this damn you game. never win this game, but you won this time. I think it's because I picked Days of Thunder and I picked uh, Deep Impact. Deep Impact. Uh, really, really quickly, since you got to go, let's do a really quick SMRT. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. Uh, since I just got back from Florida on my trip, I wanted to do oh, a Florida God. one since, you know, it's been a while since we did it. And this, the title of this one is Florida woman who didn't want to pay for the sauces goes on a McDonald's tirade. Wow. Says, a Florida woman who was upset when McDonald's employee told her that, guess what? You need to pay extra for dipping sauces. Yelled at the restaurant workers and threatened to rob the fast food eatery, even going so far as to go out to her car and retrieve a pistol, which she brought in saying, give me the damn sauce or I will shoot you quote says the worker <laughs> who the gun was put on which by the way that's very clear right that's not like oh yeah well maybe she misunderstood what i was saying i was just trying to scare no 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 you, verbatim what you said was give me the sauce or i will shoot your face wow that is a uh, uh, direct and i would i would give her the sauce because i don't think the sauce is enough to put your life in front of yeah um and i would quit that job and sue them <laughs> yes, I would 100%. Uh, but basically, she was arrested. Uh, she fought the police officers when they got there, and she was wow, really? the vehicle. Uh, they forced her to the ground, and then because she wound up striking an officer, she's going to jail for a really long time because it was assault on a police officer, and oh. so she had a weapon on her at the time. It's assault on a police officer with a weapon in possession, uh, which is uh, very, very much against the law. So, any guesses to how long not getting your 25 cent barbecue sauce uh, is going to cost this lady in jail? Uh, I'm guessing uh, probably six years. Yeah, I was, I would have thought that too. They might've gone a little lenient on here. They gave her three years. Still though, she's going to three years, three but years in, in, in jail because she wanted dipping. Yes, and think like about that. it. You know, on her, you know how it, your first day there, they're like, yeah, I murdered a fool. Well, actually it's a woman's prison, but yeah, I murdered a fool. That's my woman's voice. <laughs> and then like the other one's heart. like, I shit my boyfriend. And then what are you in here for? Bitch wouldn't give me my barbecue sauce. They'd probably be afraid of her. <laughs> yeah, they probably would be like damn that bitch is crazy yeah, she's in here crazy. for three years as a barbecue sauce i'm not gonna piss her off. i ain't messing with that chick i hope she my cellmate likes me <laughs> all right well i'll let you go so you can go pick up your son uh go to this is funner.com for all your podcasting needs and all the great stuff up there listen to this is my podcast that i do about music history uh starting to record season eight oh here shit. In excuse me season seven here in just a few weeks uh very exciting and uh you can listen to first six seasons on your favorite streaming service. Also, plus one stories up there too. So until oh, yeah, next great. time, I love that one. I I just started listening to the Michael Jackson one that you put out. Oh, it's so good. Check it Super out. Super good. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. We're gonna get All out right, here. Man. Bye. 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 Selling your car to Carvana is as easy as as easy as pie. Sure. All you have to do is enter your license plate or VIN. As easy as a stroll in the park. Okay. Then just answer a few questions and you'll get a real offer in seconds. As easy as singing. Why not? Schedule a pickup or drop off and Carvana will pay you that amount right on the spot. As easy as playing guitar. Actually, I find that kind of difficult. But selling your car to Carvana is as easy as can be. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get an instant offer today. Well, well, well. Shopping for a car? Yep. Carvana made financing a car as smooth as can be. Oh, yeah? I got pre-qualified instantly and had real terms personalized just for me. Hmm, doesn't get much smoother than that. Well, I got to browse thousands of car options on Carvana, all within my budget. Doesn't get much smoother than that. It does. I actually wanted a car that seemed out of my range, but I was able to add a cosigner and found my dream car. It doesn't get much... Oh, it gets smoother. It's getting delivered tomorrow. Visit Carvana.com or download the app to get pre-qualified today.